Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my next guest for today. My guest is the latest addition to the all elite wrestling roster. He is the best man, Miro. What's up, Miro? What's up, y'all? Uh, my name is Miro and I'm the best man, not just in all elite wrestling, but overall in the whole world. You know what? I agree with you. I agree with you on that one. <laughs> um, well, Mira, let's, let's just kind of go ahead and get started. You know, so much has changed in the last several months for you. And I almost feel like we're seeing a whole new person. Let's just start off with how do you feel with everything that's been happening in your life the last several months? Oh, it's been great. It's It's been a blessing in disguise. And people think it will, uh, I don't know, I don't care about people, but overall when you look at it, it could have been a bad time with a pandemic and the firing and all that but it wasn't at all for me it was it was a straight home run i got to see the home got to reconnect with my wife in a way that i couldn't do it before uh got to visit with my family in bulgaria and and for months they were with me in america as well um also i worked on my body and and i got the best job ever so this pandemic and 2020 for me personally has been has been great so far no, that's really awesome. I love the fact that you got to reconnect with your your family, you know, spend time with your wife and all of that. And it's kind of like that downtime that we didn't expect somehow has benefited us through all of this, you know, darkness that is COVID. Yeah, and I hope that people did that uh, that did take that, not not just for granted because as I said, it sucks. Uh, overall when you think about, man, I got to be at home, but what can I make when I be when I'm at home, I started a Twitch channel. I started the YouTube stuff, and it's just so many things that I had the opportunity being on the road before that 300 days a year, not having the time for any of it. And now I just got to sit back, uh, relax, and enjoy and work on the stuff that I really needed to work on. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that time off that you had, and you know, starting the Twitch channel and all of that. You know, during this time off, did you have any sort of time to like really think about what you wanted to do with your future, or how did that work out for you? No, I, I, I leave that up to God. I don't care about the future. I, I know my future is set. I knew I was confident in my abilities and I knew I was going, I wanted to go to AEW. So I knew that was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. And uh, we waited patiently and we had opportunities and a lot of different um, offers to go to different places. But I knew that's, that's not what I wanted to do. I knew the AEW was my path. And here we are, best man. Well what was it about AEW that made you realize that it was your path? Especially because when the announcement was made that, you know, you were going to be a free agent, everybody was like, oh, he should go here. He should go there. So, like, how do you block out that noise and stick with what you feel? I've never cared about the noise, honestly. Like, I knew, once again, I know I'm on a path. I know... I know everything I'm doing, it's, it's, supposed to be, it's supposed to be done. So I have no doubts at all. And once you have no doubts, you live your life way more openly and freely compared to stressing, oh, what should I do? Or what should, I should have done this. Maybe I'm gonna do this. Like why, why stressing yourself with all these unnecessary uh, thoughts, especially when a lot of things are not in your control. And if you can't be in your control, then you cannot stress about it. Uh, but I knew, I just know, uh, I just knew. I was so confident in my abilities and and AEW was so special. And it is still so special watching their matches, watching the styles that they bring to the, uh, you know, to, to people's eyes. It's not just one style, it's every style around the world, put in one company and every night, every week, every Wednesday night on Dynamite, you can see five star matches. Uh, just on a regular Wednesday. We don't save anything for pay-per-views. We don't save everything for big events. We give it all out every night. That's awesome. And now, you know, here's the thing, though, is that a lot of people can say, like, about a certain workplace, like, oh, this place is great, this per this place is awesome, but you don't really know until you're actually there and you experience it for yourself. So was there ever any hesitations, you know, going into AEW, like, oh, like, what if this doesn't work out? Did that ever cross your mind? No. No, never, never did. Uh, I'm a somewhat of a, pro, a project. Well, I did, you know, I started wrestling with, with Rick Drazen, then with Rikishi, Gangrel, Black Pearl. So they taught me how to wrestle. But my, uh, my, my education under fire was definitely into WWE. So I'm always going to be grateful for that. Um, but never had any doubt about anything. It was just, it was just the way to go. It was just the way to go. And, and I loved every single step of the way. So how has your experience with AEW been so far? 
Oh, it's fantastic. I love coming to work every single week. I'm looking forward to coming to work every single week. Uh, everybody's so everybody's so happy, supportive, and, and, and they actually care about a product. As I said, we're not just here to pass on time or let's just buy this week. Let's just buy us one more week. Let's just, oh, if only we can get to the pay-per-view. We don't do any of that. We're going every single night with the same mindset is to be the best wrestling company in the world. And we've proven day in and day out that it's where we are. Well, one of the things that I think that the talent has, you know, said to me when I've spoken to AEW talent is that one of the things that they'd love is the creative freedom that they have. So for you, how has that sort of, you know, changed your experience in wrestling to have this newfound creative feeling and how freedom and how has it made it, you know, much better to be, you know, yourself? Yeah, well, you definitely get to experiment more and you get to try stuff. But once again, you know, you gotta, you have to know what you're doing because you know, in a different settings, you have writers and that, that they kind of dictate your promos, your character or whatnot. But now it's pretty much all up to you. So it's a sink or swim time. And I tell you, I love swimming. Do you find it like, are you constantly thinking about like creative ideas that you can do for your character? Or do you kind of just like let it come as it goes? It all depends. I had my, I had an idea. It's not just about a character. It's just something that I've been doing lately and not lately since my wife kind of taught me is to pay attention to my social media. Uh, that pays a lot. You know, it's, it's a huge, uh, asset in my, in my, in my arsenal, especially compared to a lot of AEW guys who has no social media. So I think that's what I bring to the table as well in me being able to promote that around the world, uh, I think it gives us a great opportunity. So yeah, I think social media is something that I'm really going towards, especially with the gaming stuff. It is just the young, young people stuff. This is what we do. I don't, I'm 35, but I don't consider myself, you know, old by any means. I'm 35 and beyond. And Age is video. just a number. Yeah, absolutely it is. And especially with nowadays where you can take care of yourself. And, and I'm so glad that I have like a mind of a, of a young kid. Cause as I said, I love video games. I love like Versace shirts. I love blonde hair. Now I love all these things, man. And it's fun because before I couldn't do that. I was, I was in a narrow path with saying, don't look around, don't smile, don't wave, don't do this, don't do that. Now it's different. Now it's just all up to me. You know, and I like that because like I said, you can really feel this change that you've had in your persona. And one of the things that I've definitely noticed about you, you know, since your release is that you've had this more, you know, engagement with your fans and all of that. Is that something that like you kind of like always wanted or you just never really knew that you could kind of go about it this direction? You know, you mentioned the Twitch channel, the YouTube channel and, you know, all of that. It's always been about the fans with me. Oh, it always has been about the fans. You can be the greatest professional wrestler. You can be the greatest magician. But if there's nobody there to see you, to applaud you, to boo you, like who cares, right? There is nobody for you to entertain. You're going to entertain your family. And whether they like you or not, they're still going to give you the clap before, <laughs> because, you know, they love you. But the fans, the, we all do everything about the fans. It's always been about the fans. And that's why I've been so blessed throughout my career to have the greatest fans ever. Because without them, there would be me. They, I wouldn't be in AEW. I wouldn't have the Twitch channel. I wouldn't have my social media. I wouldn't have any of this. So thank you for all the fans and thank you for all the support throughout the years. And I love that I'm able to take them for a ride in AEW all the way to the top. Exactly. Were you surprised by the huge amount of fan support? I mean, I don't know if you were surprised necessarily because, you know, considering that the fans have always sort of had your back, but even afterwards, were you surprised by how much, you know, attention the fans were like, oh, we're so excited to see Miro here. We're so excited to see Miro there. Yeah. Um, the fans, man, there's something else. Like, it, it was. it's such a great ride because when I first started, you know, they hated me. They said I can wrestle because all my matches were like two minutes. He can wrestle. Oh, he's fat. Oh, he doesn't speak English. Oh, his wife has a fake accent. It was so bad, like throughout the years. But I think what the cool thing about it is they gave me a chance. They gave me a chance and they let me prove to them that I am that freaking good, that I am the best man. And I think because of that, and you saw all the all the crap that I had to go through to get a little bit of sunlight somewhere out there. You know, they stuck with me, and I feel like that's what they respect, that I stuck through all this. And that's what I respect about them, is they could have let me go a long time ago. That, uh, not WWE. The fans could have been like, ah, they're never going to do anything with him. Let's just, let's just move on. Let's go to wrestler B. That never happened. They always stay with me, and that's why I'm always going to be grateful for them. 
That's really awesome, honestly. And here's the thing, too, is that your debut, let's just jump right into your AEW debut, because even though I had a feeling that we were going to be seeing you in AEW, you know, I'm watching Dynamite, and I didn't necessarily expect for you to come out. I think that the way you sort of came into AEW was very, very shocking for everybody. So tell us a little bit about, you know, the idea and everything that went into your debut in AEW, and how did it feel to, you know, take that microphone and just tell the whole world that, you know, Miro's here, you know, you got the Miro chance, like the Miro day chance, and, you know, all of that how did all of that feel for you it was great man it was just i just got a goosebumps as soon as i got there and i even looked at billy gunn i think he was front row who is my former trainer i could learn so much from billy gunn and he's there and i see his big ass smile and just like so happy and it did, i just look at him just thinking about it, it gives me goosebumps it's just it's just being able to live in the moment and not to worry about oh, I'm supposed to do this now. I'm supposed to do this now. No, you can just be there and enjoy the moment. Enjoy like every breath, every second of the camera, of the people, of the chance, looking around. It, it was priceless. And it made, what made it so special was the way that AEW were able to keep that secret. Uh, we've been to many other situations before like this when weeks ahead it's supposed to be a surprise but we find out on the dirt sheets but i command with with such a respect for aw for doing that because i showed up backstage people didn't even know they're like oh what are you doing here are you the best man they're asking kip who's your best man and kip was i don't know because i don't even know if we kip knew to be honest really uh, no of course he knew <laughs> like when did We're he find friends. out <laughs> Me and kip are best friends of course he knew uh but yeah it was a surprise for a lot of people and i think this was the biggest shocker. That's why so many people were shocked because they just nobody knew. So did you had it like in terms of the idea, though, like how did you mm. say like, OK, like, you know, you're already you're signed, you're part of the company. Now, yeah. when do we decide that, hey, you're coming in, you're being brought on? And did you like the, what was did you have a different idea of how you wanted to make your AEW debut? Did it go as as you planned? Everything went as planned uh, once. So I knew that they wanted to sign me, and, and Chris talked about this, uh, Chris Jericho, that they wanted to bring me in, but they wanted to find something uh, for me to do. They didn't want me just to come in and do nothing. So that's why they had Kip and the, and the best man uh, and the wedding. And me and Kip, we go way back, too. So me and Kip are good friends. We have been good friends. So I think it was a great opportunity for me with, and, and for them to see it. Hey, we have Miro, who's done 17 other weddings before, and he is the all-time most professional wedding girl ever uh also he is the best man as well he's the greatest worker of all time he's the best professional video gamer he's the video game world champion why not bring him in so here i am that's but as far as creative I, I i loved it i loved it because once again they said the best man they said a wedding i'm like those are my those are my those are my go-to's you know i love entertaining yes inside the ring i will i will tear your head off but let me have some fun outside and I think the fans definitely made that connection right away. I just remember seeing like, oh, like, you know, it makes sense that, you know, that he has like, you know, the the, the whole storylines with the weddings and all of this. And now he's coming in as the best man. And people are like, oh, this definitely works. Because even afterwards, like just having like the moniker of the best man is, you know, a really, you know, it's you can definitely do a lot with the best man. So and I personally think like when you came out on AEW, I was like, man, he looks so like even though you really, like, you know, you're body just like changed a little bit and your hair changed a bit a little bit it yeah. did so much i think it went like a really long way where fans were like oh man like you know Miro looks pretty badass <laughs> and i gotta compliment you on that one Thank how you. did how did the changes come along for you know you know just you know reshaping your body or like i don't know if that's the way right way to say it but like you know just coming in with this like new leaner meaner look and you know the hair well i had to i had to i didn't have to i wanted to make some adjustments because the story that I left WWE was, was me being a broken down husband. And I trained for that. I went down all the way to like 240 pounds. I went on keto diets. I was like skinny and stuff because I wanted to play that character. I wanted to get in that mindset. And I had the mustache and everything. Everything was just fitting into it. But now knowing, you know, I'm done there. I have to move on. It was great opportunity, especially with the pandemic. And I, even though all the gyms closed in LA, I been, built my own gym at home. I, I got, I started talking to Jerry Ward again, who is my nutritionist and my trainer. And he set up the right program. And it was, it was a good old hard work. 
nothing else. It's just that. It's just good old hard work. You just go in the gym day and night. You work your ass off and you get the results. It's really simple when you think about it. <laughs> it's really simple. Just many of us don't want to do it, right? <laughs> I mean, I would love to have the excuse of people, oh, I work, I have kids. But hey, I go 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning to the workout. I, work, I drive 60 miles a day to go to workout because there's only one gym open in LA. And you got to do what you got to do, man. It's just, I always took life as you got to do what you got to do because I was taught in early age, ever since I came to America, even before that, if you want to achieve something, you better work your ass for it. Cause otherwise you'll be just at home. Well said, honestly, well said. So now let's talk about, you know, you mentioned that you, what you liked about AEW is that they have, you know, this variety of talent and we can definitely say something. I we're seeing so many different influences, you know, Lucha influences and just so much that AEW is bringing to the table when it comes right. to variety. How, who are some of the people that you're just like, you know, obviously you haven't worked with a lot of these talents before, but who are some of the people that you have your eye on that you're impressed by and also talent that you're impressed by and would like to work with? down the line uh everybody's so impressed i haven't seen you know i've never got to opportunity to work with these guys before you know except for the few guys you know like moxley and brody and these guys like cody dustin they've been there before they've been together but now with all these guys just looking from outside it's just so exciting because they have so many like cool maneuvers and cool things and just cool characters when i saw hangman work for the first time live i was really impressed the guys the guy is really good, man. He's got his character. He's got his stuff going on. And I think he's got the right tools. Also, Kenny. Kenny Omega has been around forever now. But just watching him from afar, I've been a big fan of his style, of his work. He's big guy. He's vicious. He he knows how to do it all. And this is another guy who I'm really interested in. of not just uh, stepping in the ring with him, but also playing video games with him and get to destroy him <laughs> there as well. Because what better way is to humiliate somebody but beat him in his both two favorite things? That's definitely the way to get back at somebody, right? Right. <laughs> you know, okay. So, you know, we're talking about AEW and, you know, some of the major differences. Let's kind of, you know, dive into Tony Khan. One of the things that I hear about him is that he's a very, you know, open person. Can you sort of right. describe to us what the relationship is like with you and Tony Khan, what your first meeting was like and all of that? Well, the first time I met him was years ago, maybe five years ago. We were in Jacksonville for a live event with WWE. He came backstage. He gave all the boys like free shirts and free like swag, Jacksonville Jaguars. He was a great guy, man, because he loves wrestling. All his life, he loved wrestling. Then um, Jacksonville was coming to Nashville and I took my father-in-law to a, a Jacksonville Jaguars game. So once again, I contacted Tony maybe three years ago. So he welcomed me, he gave me tickets, he took me uh, down to the field. He was a very nice guy because once again, he's a great guy who loves wrestling. He owes me nothing. He's met me one time before, but there I am asking for tickets. Of course, he says, come give me tickets, passes, everything. And uh, now that we came, this is the first time they actually get to work, you know, to get to work business. Because before there was all, and he was very, very, he's very smart, man. He's very good and, and he will get whatever he wants at a price, whatever, whatever is necessary. He doesn't care. He's not here to save money. He's not here to cut corners. He's here to create the greatest professional wrestling there is. And so far, man, it's a 10, 10. So, you know, in terms of how did the approach come though, you know, with Tony Khan, when you knew you, you, you knew you got released and all of that, how did right. he reach out to you and how did you guys sort of, you know, formulate this plan? You know, like, Hey, I'm signing. This is, was there anything that he said to you where you were like, okay, like this is the right, definitely the right place of where I'm going. Uh, was there a right thing to say? There was no right thing to say. There was no right or wrong. I knew, I knew what AW was standing for and I knew it was all elite wrestling and me being the all elite wrestler, where else am I going to go? And, and just, it's nothing that he said, just looking at the, just looking at the landscape, looking at the people who are there and looking where they go and seeing that they're, you know, it's, they had all the, there is no downside to it at all. They're on TNT. They have these shows. They have all these great expectations. They have great inspirations. They want to be the best. And if you want to be the best, you just have to hang with the big boys and 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 tony khan is not afraid to do that and he told me that from the beginning and he was very convincing i didn't need much convincing because i had options we all know that i had options 
but it was just a no-brainer, man. It's AW. I think the talent sold me the most. If anything, I think the the talent sold me the most. I like that because sort of seeing what is done with other people can sort of give you like an idea of what can possibly be done with you and what you can bring to the table. So that's really great. And now you have guys like Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks who are also, you know, helping run things and all of that. How, how, what does it add to, you know, does it make things better to have guys that know exactly where, what it's like to be, you know, to be, to be the talent, to be the wrestlers, to be those people that have been through it all, you know, sort of helping run and make the decisions? Right. Well, I think most companies are based with people who knows what they're doing, kind of, sort of, right? But, but I don't, uh, like, I don't have to deal with, not, not deal. Like, I'm not in the, like, I don't go to the Bucks or to Kenny or to Cody or to any of these people. Like, if I need some something, I will go to them. But it's pretty much me straight to Tony Khan. And that's the good thing about it. There's no, you don't need any middle people. You don't need a producer to go tell a producer, to go tell a secretary, to go tell the airplane pilot, to go to the bus driver to tell, you know, the boss. You don't have to do that. You can cut all this and go straight, hey, Tony, hey, Tony, this is what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Yeah, man, that sounds great. Let's do it. Cool. It's done. <laughs> that sounds very just like quick and easy and that's just straight how, but to that's the how point. easy it is because who knows my character better than myself and if he hasn't he has an idea he has a path like he's like all right this is the end all right cool let me fill in the blanks you know like this is how it works it's not it's not 50 writers in a room sweating it out right right exactly where things can t sort of get lost in the shuffle down the line uh, so now, Miro, before we go into the lightning round portion, I do want to ask you one final question. You know, right now there's just so there, I guess you can say the world is at your feet. The world is your oyster. You can do do anything you want. What are some of the things you want to do within AEW and outside of AEW? What are some of your bucket list items? Well, well, within AEW, clearly I'm not here. <clears throat> I'm not here to waste my time. Um, and by that, I mean, I love Kip. Clearly, I love Kip. I'm here to be his best man. Uh, and my first and number one priority is the wedding. But also, I don't want to cut people in line. I've been there when I had to do certain matches, but then people come in, they butt in, and they go straight to the top. Like, I, I don't want to do that. I want to do it the right way. I'm going to come here. I'm going to pay my dues if I have to again. I, I love Kip. We're going to do the wedding. But once this thing is over, man, you know, it's going to be a go time. And somebody's going to get their, their teeth knocked in. We're just going to see who that is. I'm very, very excited about that. What about outside of AEW? What are some of the things you still want to accomplish? You know, whether it be with your Twitch channel, with YouTube, all of that. It's got to be Twitch, man. Miro Twitch. I love that thing. I lo it just I love the handsome chatters. I love the community. I love how given everybody is. It's not just about me, me, me. It's about, it's about a community that we come together and we have fun. We play video games. And I almost spilled the beans. We have a huge news coming up. Oh, uh, okay. I think, I think it'll be, be the end of this, on your Twitch channel. Uh, it'll be announced everywhere because it's a huge. It's like worldwide news. It's like nobody will will, will be able to not hear about it. it. It's huge. It's so huge. I Do we have a timeline you. of when you're doing the announcement? Uh, it's got to be by the end of the week, probably. Okay, so definitely keep an eye out on all of your socials so we can sort yes. of, you know, find yes. out what the big news is. Oh, it's I'm gonna excited. Be huge. It's going to be huge, and it's just going to make us spend a lot more time, me and the Handsome Chatters together. This is all for the Handsome Chatters. So if you're not a Handsome Chatter, please join Miro Twitch and find out what that is. <laughs> That's very, very exciting. So now, Miro, let's go ahead and jump into our lightning round game. This is essentially where I ask you just 10 random questions and you answer them as you please. So oh are you guys ready for lightning round with Miro? And let's go ahead and do this. Question number one, why the Clippers and not the Lakers? Does it have to be a fast answer or a short answer? <laughs> it's up to you. You answer however you want. So I was a, okay, so I'll start from far. I'm a Shaq fan. I grew up a Shaq fan. So I was a Orlando Magic fan. He went to the Lakers. Of course, I became a Laker fan. After they kicked him out, the way they treated him, I hated Kobe and I loved Shaq. So I moved on to the Miami later to the Miami Heat, and then Miami came to play uh, in LA. I couldn't afford Laker tickets, and I hated the Lakers. So for a hundred dollars, I can sit on a Clipper game on the fifth row in the middle. Of course, I'm gonna go watch Shaq in the fifth row in the middle. I paid a hundred bucks. Then he went and played for Phoenix. 
I went and watched them again for the Clippers with against the Clippers. And then I was like, you know what? I like the Clippers. They suck, but at least it's not the Lakers. <laughs> what? And I, and I stuck with them. And I stuck with them through so many bad years, man. I tell you, I watched them. I watched them from being so bad, then turn so good, almost there, nothing. Now almost there, now nothing. And I'm due for a victory. I'm telling you, I am due for a Clipper victory. Are LA fans always shocked when they're like, you're a Clippers fan when you can be a Lakers fan? Because I'm pretty shocked here as a fellow, you know, LA born native. It's like, it's very confusing to me. But but the new generation is not going to be like this. The new generation is going to be split. Because clearly Lakers are the, you know, they've been in town forever, right? But now it's the Clippers time. And once we open the new building, the new facility, Steve Ballmer is the greatest professional wrestler. Uh, professional wrestler. Also, he could be the greatest <laughs> professional wrestler because yeah. he's very entertaining. But he, I think he's the greatest uh, sports owner. And I think he's going to do anything possible for the Clippers to win. And I'm pretty sure in the next five years, we're going to win a championship. Question number two. Which wrestler, when you first met them, were you the most starstruck by? Oh, boy. I, I'm starstruck every day by seeing people. Like, it don't matter. Like, I'll see Taker and I'll freak out. When I saw Hogan, I freaked out. Even to these days, when I see Hogan, I freak out. <laughs> uh, yeah, because he's my idol. Like, I started wrestling because of him. Uh, so all these people that, you know, I grew up watching, even though I've known them for years, I still get starstruck when I see them. It's just because I'm just a kid living his dream, man. Like, there's nothing else. There's no other way to say it. It's so crazy. You're like, wait, but those are technically my peers now, you know? Right, right. But to me, it's not. For me, they're always going to be like these demigods of sorts. Question number three. Do you believe in superstitions? What is your top superstition? God has my back. I don't believe in any of this shit. <laughs> None of them. Not even the the salt or any of that type of stuff. The, the, the step on the crack, break your mama's back. The one that they spread uh, in school. <laughs> There's one that they, it's like, it was in the elementary where people would say, if you stepped on a crack, you broke your mama's back. And so many people believe that it was like these silly superstitions. Oh I would say they should look into God and they should read about God. And they will, and then he will explain everything like superstitions is man-made shit. That's what That's it is. That's definitely true. I agree with you on that. <laughs> Question number four. Favorite and least favorite thing about weddings? Favorite thing about weddings? Well, my wife, clearly. My wife is the favorite thing about wedding. Uh, <laughs> my least favorite thing about wedding? Gosh. Maybe the, that I have to deal with it. But my wife dealt with the whole thing. Oh, see. Maybe you got, the hangover. You got lucky. The what? Maybe the, the hangover? Maybe the, maybe the hangover. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But you know what? That just means you had a really good time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Every <laughs> time. <laughs> Question number five. Name your three all-time favorite video games. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. FIFA. FIFA. And FIFA. Perfect. You nailed it. <laughs> Question number six. If you were a candy bar, which candy bar would you be? If I am a candy bar? Yes. Wow. It's got to be a protein bar of sorts. It's got to be the best protein bar in the world. That's what it is. Well, okay. So I think that would be. So but, but would you consider a protein bar a candy bar, though? Absolutely. That That's count? what I eat. Yes. That, yeah. Okay. All if right. you're a grown man, <laughs> I believe your candy bar should be a, should be a protein bar. There you go. Well said. Question number seven. What game are you not good at? None. I'm good at all the games. There's not, not like a game that I'm not game good at. Or like a charades type of game. I don't even know what charades is. The one where you act things out and the person has to guess what you're like talking about. <laughs> like you act something out. No, no. I'm the best man. I'm good at everything. <laughs> the bestest. Question number eight. What was your favorite cartoon character as a kid? Oh, man. There's so many, there's so many, but when you think about it, it's gotta be probably Tom and Jerry, probably they'll be like number one. You just, you know why? Why? It's because they didn't need language for understand for you to be funny. That's true. And you're so engaged throughout the whole episode. It's so universal. You don't need anything. You didn't see people's faces. You didn't see, there was no words. You were just good old entertainment, man. You just sit (laughs) and you enjoyed by 
by these silly cartoons. And as much as I love Dexter's Laboratory, I love all these other things, I love animes. But anime without language, it's without Japanese explaining for seven minutes why how they're gonna kill you in the next two minutes, it's just not an anime. But with Tom and Jerry, you have not, it's so universal, man. It's the best. It's a classic. I don't know anybody who does not like Tom and Jerry. Impossible. Question number nine, which TV show do you think Miro should have been casted on? And this could be past or a present show. Wow. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I would love to be casted in my own movie, you know? Like, I feel like I have a story that it could be really told in any kinds of, even 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 on a Broadway show, it could be told. So yeah, I would say that. I will, I will put myself in my own movie because I just don't want to be that. Oh, put me in this, put me in that. Just put me in my own movie. That's all I care. And it would be better than Tom and Jerry. <laughs> and Rocky together. It's like Tom and Jerry meets Rocky. Yes, yes, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> analogy. A very, very good analogy. Question number 10. If there was one meal you could eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, I think I had that on my Twitch channel. Gosh. It's got to be eggs. Eggs? Any sort of eggs? Scrambled? Well, the, the, the thing about eggs is I get to do them any kind of way. That's why I'm sticking with the product eggs, because I can just manipulate them to the way I want it. But. Smart. <laughs> Because if, if it's not, it's got to be some Bulgarian dish or French fries. I love French fries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. There's so Well, no. What if we... Can we combine French fries with the egg on top and feta cheese? I think you can. I mean, I've personally never had it, but it sounds pretty good. It doesn't yeah, sound like it would taste bad at all. That's a good that's, combination. That's my choice. <laughs> all righty. And bonus question. I saw you singing Shake It Off. By Taylor Swift. Can I we stay up till night? I got nothing in my brain. <laughs> That's what people say. Ooh, ooh. That's what people say. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I so love Peter, Taylor Swift. Yes, you're a Swifty. I'm so happy I'm to hear Swiftie. this. I'm a Swifty. When I looked you up, I saw you like Taylor Swift. I'm like, yes, I'm going to do this podcast. Yes. <laughs> you don't oh have to God. ask me twice. <laughs> so the so only funny. the only reason why I did this is because you love Taylor Swift. This is like the best moment of my entire life right now. And I was going to ask, and I was like, oh, I wonder if it would be like, it would be super weird if I asked him. I was like, screw it. I'm asking him. <laughs> you kidding me? My wife, my wife still, she's like, I can't believe you like Taylor Swift. But my wife loves Taylor Swift, but the old school Taylor Swift, the country girl. Like what's so... She's evolving. She's being modern. She's 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 the best. Probably she's the best singer. She's the best. Probably she writes her own stuff. She she sings her. She plays her own stuff. She's amazing, man. She's her and Pink are definitely my two favorites. Oh yes, they're both. I don't think any. I don't think any Rihanna. I don't think any Beyonces. I don't think uh, Madonna comes close as much as I love Madonna. It's just Taylor Swift, man. Her voice is just like. I don't know. It's just so cool. It's very cool. Thank you. I have been saying this for the longest time, and now I have Miro to back me up. So we are good. I am yeah. winning every single future argument, and every time I'm going to pull up this clip right here. Miro, right. I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with thank me. You were absolutely fun to talk to. Really incredible. I'm excited to see your journey on AEW, and I'm excited to thank hear you. your upcoming announcement. But before we go, where can people follow you on social media? Social media, here we go. We have To Be Miro on IG. We have To Be Miro TV on YouTube. We have Miro Twitch on Twitch. And we have To Be Miro on Twitter as well. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Perfect. No, no snap, no, not, not snap cam. What was that? Snapchat? Snapchat, Snapchat. No Snapchat. I have TikTok. I don't know my TikTok. I'm sorry. My wife is so mad at me that I'm not doing my TikToks. <laughs> you but need yes. to do those TikToks. <laughs> but I feel like next time, wow, you already put everything down there. You oh, yeah, we have you. it right there. And then we also have your at wow, Tiffany Euro right there. <laughs> so next time, I think we should do a video, me and you singing Taylor Swift. That would be my dream, all right? That would be like a dream okay. right there. Or we just do an all Taylor Swift video. We'll do it. 
I'm all for it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miro. Thank, Thank you. you for everyone watching this video. Please do not forget to give this video a like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more awesome interviews like this one. And I'm going to be posting all of the links so you can follow Miro on everything. So make sure you go ahead and click on the description box. Other than that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.